Morning, gentlemen. Morning. Um, each of you, did you forget something? you're looking for that, I'm just going to say that, um, are you ready? Okay. That each of you will have 15 minutes to present your arguments. Mr. Lavery, is it Lavery or Lavery? Well, you can learn Lavery. Lavery, okay. We normally do, but we can call all kinds of things. <laughs> well, we'll call you Mr. Lavery today, okay? So you will have uh, your 15 minutes, but you also may reserve up to five minutes for rebuttal time if you so choose. You just have to let me know when you get up there whether you want to save some time to rebut what if whatever he may say in his argument, okay? Okay. All right. Be divided that way. You don't have to, but you can if you want. If you want to save some time to respond to what the city of Akron has to say. Okay. Can I save ten minutes? No. <laughs> you can only save up to five. That's the way it works. Okay. And this monitor over here has your time. And I'm going to set it electronically over here when you begin, and you can always check to see how much time you have if you need to. Okay. And so, like I said, if you want to save five minutes, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay? But you do need to stay behind that podium because we are videotaping this. All right? So we'll have a record of it, and it'll be uh, released on uh, YouTube as well. And you'll have, and when you're, I don't think there's going to be a problem with your case. But we always talk about this and say don't talk about victims' names or children's names or anything like that. That's not going to be, I don't think, an issue with yours. But I just need to tell everybody that. So are you ready to proceed? Well, that was one of the questions I had. Is, is there a record of this? It's not an official record. It's just a matter of we'll record it and videotape it and have it available so the public can view it and you can view it, whoever. But it's not an official record like you would get at a... Uh, a court where there's a, a court reporter. Transcript and court yeah. reporter. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. yeah. Not in the Court of Appeals. As a matter of fact, we're one of the only courts of appeals that even has any kind of recording of anything. Most times there's not a recording. Okay. Okay. Because we're not presenting evidence, we're just hearing arguments. There is some kind of a thing on this. I can't hear you. There, there is, I'm sorry. There is some kind of a thing on this YouTube. Yeah. Yes. And you can see it on our uh, website too and get the, the information. Okay. I don't know. Well, that's all right. We'll Maybe somebody else. Yes, I was going to say we can have somebody talk to you about how to do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I've, I've tried to get stuff even from your website and stuff at the library, and sometimes I get some help, but most of the time I, I can't get anything. And yeah, well, I understand. Like with trying to get the docketing statements and, and other stuff like that, I, I try. It's to it's difficult when you're a pro se. I understand. But we're going to have to get started, okay? okay sure. So you uh, go ahead and come up here. Keep your voice up so we can record you.
introduce yourself and then tell me if you would like to uh, say five minutes or not. My name is Thomas Clavery, and yes, I do want to say for five minutes. All right, then we'll start. Thank you. I just want to mention at the start of this thing that it's essentially a half past nightmare. I don't know if that means anything to a number of people here them or you guys, whatever. The, the city is essentially trying to grab my property over some insignificant things. They, it's, it's like a star chamber type thing. They had a so-called hearing in, uh, in October of 18, and it was essentially a rubber stamp. It was run by some woman named Forrester, and after that hearing, I went to several others of the hearings, and the same other people got the same kind of a railroad job as I did. I don't know, she, she doesn't have any authority to run the thing, apparently. She is sort of self-appointed, and the board of these five people pretty much just rubber stamps whatever they, whatever she says in the beginning. They constantly the same thing. And I, I was over at like five or six, seven other hearings that they have once a month. And it's the same type of thing. And a whole bunch of it's illegal, I think. I don't know if somebody can knock that down at some point and straighten it out or not. If the housing board is supposed to have a hearing, they're supposed to have the hearing. She doesn't get to run the hearing. It would be the same thing, too, as if somebody from the fire department stops and gives you a speeding ticket. It's not possible. Or somebody else from, say, the water department comes and tries to run your, your hearing case. The board is supposed to run their own thing. It appears from doing whatever research I could that this is essentially a taking, a constitutional taking of the thing. I didn't know in the beginning whether I was allowed to, uh, what, what, what I was allowed to protest or complain about. In July of 18, we got a kind of threatening letter from the city about the property. They didn't say anything about what was wrong with it. There was a case a number of years ago where there was a bunch of minor things, and most of that was all taken care of. And I never heard anything again until July of 18. And then I get a, uh, another letter, threatening letter, in September, and then uh, about the hearing, and then I find out at the hearing that there was a uh, essentially a break-in at the house by whom I don't know because they've tried to keep it from coming out, to keep it from getting covered up. Uh, I mean, to keep it covered up. It, it all purports to be legal, and they, they get away with all kinds of stuff. The, the hearing itself was a sham. There was apparently some inspection of some sort, illegal, no warrant, no nothing. They broke down a gate to get into the back of the house. They were inside the house. Part of it was not locked. That doesn't mean that somebody can come into the house. It was in a fenced area where they, they came in. I don't know how they can get away with all of this stuff, but apparently they do. And another thing too, on February 4th, after I tried to file an appeal and so on, they had the electric shut off last year. That caused a bunch of damage to the house. And I got a call from somebody, from uh, a lawyer, I don't know if he's a flipper, a property flipper or what, but he offered me, he said, they're gonna tear it down and I'll offer you $50,000. I know how to work with these people, is what he said. And apparently, 
at the hearing itself, I tried to bring up some stuff about there's some sort of a tax abatement thing, up to $15,000 or 15 years for repairs or even building of new houses and so on. I tried to bring that up, I was shut down. I tried to complain at the hearing itself and I, I, I got nothing. I, I got shut down. Somebody else from the, the city department says, that's all, you're done, Mr. Lavery. They refused to give me any record of anything. I filed for a precipice so I could get a transcript of the original hearing. It didn't matter. They stole one of the vehicles that was out in the front of the house. There was title problems because my wife was down in Cincinnati and she had transferred it to me uh, maybe four years ago or so. I didn't get the thing transferred at the time, so I had to try to get a loan of her to get a title and so on. But that car disappeared. It, it was a, a blazer with a snow plow. It just disappeared November 16th of 2018. All of this stuff a lot could be shown what I'm saying now with the transcript. Now the city file, uh, I, I don't know how much stuff that you guys read that's, that's on here, but the... We read everything that's produced from the lower court. Okay, including all the stuff that I file? Anything that you file that is in the record, we'll review it. Okay, well this last stuff that I filed was November 1st of, of uh, last year. It was due, according to the magistrate, on October 31st, and I go down to the uh, clerk's office. They had closed early because the electric was off and so on. So I gave a copy October 31st to the magistrate, Michael something, here. Anyways, then I filed the thing November 1st, and he subsequently okayed the thing, and that's what's here right now. And then they answered the thing about, they, they, apparently they, they can set their own dates on things. And it doesn't necessarily apply to what the, the, the court rules, local rules or, or the appellate rules, because they, they've done it several times. And everything that I'm trying to say right now, just in a few minutes, is, is in this brief here, plus the other stuff that I filed before that I tried to get complaints to you, and we shouldn't even have to be here. I had, after the original hearing, I had talked to a couple of lawyers. One wanted $10,000, one wanted $9,000. And for what? I could put that money into the house. And that's before the damage, after the city pulled the electric. I can't even find out who was responsible for that. It's, it's all just a big smush job of cover-up. And the city's own brief shows a whole bunch of that. They criticize all of my stuff about, especially the time uh, frame that's going on, that I filed, that they were supposed to that provide me copies of this stuff so that I could properly file the appeal and so on. Well, it came down to the last day, November 16th. And I took a copy to the housing office, had them stamp it, they, they date stamped it, the 16th, then I took it over and, and filed the stuff with the uh, clerk. Now they're claiming, uh, excuse me a minute, uh, I didn't trust them because of issues, various issues with the city and various other people that I had talked to. So on November 21st, I took in another copy to the city office and had them stamp that. Again, the same stamp the city refers to here, admits that there was like a similar stamp to it. No, it was the same stamp. But this time, I didn't trust them. I said, who's responsible for this? So somebody signed an Akron Housing Board. And then this Jody Forrester, who runs these hearings, who isn't supposed to run them, 
says in her affidavit, an affidavit I think is perjurious, she said that it wasn't filed until the 21st. That's the second time. I need to warn you, you're, you're starting your five minute rebuttal, so if you want to continue, you can, but if you want okay. to save it, no, you'll I'll, have to. I'll save it. Okay. Thank you. Brian Barber on behalf of the City of Akron. The case before you this morning is obviously an administrative appeal. And as this court has repeatedly held, administrative appeals must be perfected in the manner prescribed in the Ohio Revised Code. In the, specifically, they must be, a notice of appeal must be filed with the board within 30 days of the board's decision being reduced to writing. In this case, the board's decision was reduced to writing on October 16th following the hearing. The board ordered the structure on this property to be de demolished, and then Ms. Forrester handed Mr. Lavery a written notice of the decision that same night. 30 days from October 16th would be November 15th. Mr. Even under um, the argument Mr. Lavery is making here, his notice of appeal needs to be filed by November 15th, and there is no dispute in this case that it was not filed until November 16th which would be 31 days. Essentially, it was, it was late, even under Mr. Lavery's argument. And that is what the trial court found, the common police court found in this case. The common police court also found that the notice was not actually received by the Housing Appeals Board until November 21st. And the board, and the common police court based its decision on the affidavit of Ms. Forster, who is the individual who maintains the records for the board. They, she submitted an affidavit, and that affidavit was not contradicted by any other evidence in the record. There, and as Mr. Lavery said, we don't dispute the fact that there, like, there's some similarities between timestamps. I don't know where that November 16th timestamp uh, came from, personally. And all I know is that what Ms. Forrester represented in her affidavit is that what was in the record that she maintains for the Housing Appeals Board does not contain anything prior to November 21st. Tell me about the November 16th timestamp. Does it, does it appear in looking at it that it was a city's timestamp? It, it, the, the time, when I say it's similar, like I, I am, I'm being sincere about the fact, it does look similar, but it doesn't contain any information about who, uh, like it, uh, it doesn't say City of Akron, it doesn't say Housing Division, it doesn't say, um, it, it doesn't contain anything like that that's identifiable. It just says a uh, it says received and then a uh, date on it. Does the city use that type of a stamp uh, ever to receive documents? That's what I'm saying is when you look at the record, you'll see the one from November 21st looks very oh, similar to that one. Okay. So I, but again, I don't know what that is. That could I'm I'm assuming that we don't have unique timestamps generally speaking. So I but. The one in the law department, for example, says law department on it, so it's a little bit easier to tell when we receive something as opposed to this, which is just more generic. Thank you. Um, but the evidence in the record, at, at best, that would create an ambiguity in the record, and the ambiguity is clarified by Ms. Forster's affidavit. And November 21st is more than 30 days from the date that Mr. Lavery was handed the notice of the decision. It's more than 30 days after Mr. Lavery was mailed the notice of the, of the decision, and it's more than 30 days after the notice of the decision was posted at the property. Under all of these standards, Mr. Lavery was more than 30 days uh, late in filing his appeal. And the trial court correctly concluded based on that that it did not have jurisdiction over this case. And that is the issue that's before you on appeal, is the trial court's dismissal of this case based on lack of jurisdiction. So even if the ambiguous stamp was, uh, reflect, did reflect that the city that he filed his appeal with the uh, city administrator. It still would be late, is what Correct. you're saying. It would be one day, it, it would be still one be day, one day. yes. Okay. Because it, it was handed to, uh, the decision was handed to him the night of the hearing, so it would, that was th three days of November 15th. And that is the base of the trial court's decision in this case. Or the trial court found that and then found in the alternative that it was late for the November 21st reason. But Mr. Lambert has never addressed the actual November 15th 
it, um, aspect of this. In his briefing, he always keeps referring to the November 16th as being the final date, despite it being 31 days after he received it. Uh, briefly, I would touch on another issue that Mr. Flavery uh, raised in his brief, which is that he did not receive the motion to dismiss. That's not supported by the record in this case. Um, there's nothing in the record to indicate whether or not he received it, other than the fact that the certificate of service um, on the motion to dismiss indicates that it was filed through the electronic filing system of the clerk of courts for Summit County, which sends out notifications to everyone that is registered with the, the e-filing service, but also that a hard copy, a paper copy, was sent to Mr. Lavery at the address that he had um, on file with the court in this case. So everything in the record indicates that this was sent to Mr. Lavery. And Mr. Lavery does have an obligation to make, to uh, monitor the docket as well. So even assuming that he didn't receive this for whatever reason, despite being mailed to the address that he was um, that he had in the record, he would still have an obligation to make sure that uh, to monitor the filing of the docket. Regardless, nothing in the record would support the finding that he doesn't he did not receive this, and that would not therefore there's no basis on which to actually reverse um, on that argument. And then another issue that Mr. Lavery raised in his brief, and he raised it almost in passing, and like most of the arguments he makes, it's not supported by citations to the record or to authorities. He challenges the housing division's ability to enforce the housing code in the city of Akron. Beyond the fact that that's outside the scope of this appeal, and also to keep in mind, even the decision in this case was a decision by the Housing Appeals Board, not something that the Housing Division did. Uh, the argument, therefore, is, is not really part of this appeal. It's not pertinent to whether or not the Housing Appeals Board has the authority to um, order something demolished. But regardless, we addressed the issue in our, we fully briefed the issue in our brief, and um, unless the court has any questions about that, I'm not going to reiterate um, those argumentations here. It's, uh, it's an issue that was raised in passing when we addressed it just out of abundance of caution. What, what record do we have, though, Mr. Forrest? Will we have the transcript? Uh, no, Your Honor. The, the, only, uh, the only evidence in the record is uh, Ms. Forrester's affidavit and the exhibits that were attached to it and, a, and the actual initial filing from Mr. Uh, Lavery in the Common Pleas Court. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. If the court doesn't have any further questions, um, I respectfully request that the court overrule Mr. Lavery's assignment of error and affirm the decision of the Common Police Court. Thank you. Mr. Lavery, you still have five minutes.
where that, that is, I don't know. But I have a copy of it, too, and when I filed the thing. And then I filed the second one on the 21st, and they did the same thing. They just stamped it. But since I didn't trust them, I had somebody try to sign it. I said, you, you've got to sign it. You've got to mark this or something. So then they marked it at Akron Housing Board. Now, judge uh, that, that wrote this decision out in, in uh, January even mentions in here about the time and so on for an appeal and it's when it, the, the wording was specifically, and even the city mentioned in this Helms case that they cited, that it's when it was sent. We didn't get anything other than that, that notice, that, that signature form on the 16th. I was not even allowed to contest a whole bunch of stuff that time. That's why I wanted the transcript. But I kept getting cut off. I was not allowed to, to contest any of it. I, I don't know how to handle this whole thing other than the time issue has to be straightened out first. And then maybe the other things. I tried to bring that up in, in my brief and in my filings. And, and I also filed a, a thing on November 1st called an objection. Maybe this can try to get through to you what's been going on, this nightmare. But the city, I don't know why, except they've got certain developers in their pockets that they're trying to grab this property. I suspect that they did something like this, maybe a, a half mile away or something like that. There's an acre and a sixth of the property there, and there's north of this, there's a five acre property where some guy, for whatever reason, tore down his fancy house. And I think somebody wants to grab that property because they can put up two cheap houses. I call them tin foil and, and tinker toys. That house that's there right now, in spite of the stuff that's, that's gone bad since the city pulled the electric on there, so I couldn't even work on the place. And a, a note, too, that they didn't pull the electric a whole bunch of other houses because when I went to these other meetings, I got the address of these various houses. I went around to see what was supposedly wrong with these things. I see the electric meters still there, and somebody's still working on some of the houses, and yet they were ordered demolished. Now, they were trying to get rid of this house immediately because there was word that got around that said after March 13th, I think it was, of last year, that I had to have everything out of this house. Obviously, I couldn't. Furniture and everything else, because they were going to tear it down. But then I go to these various meetings and stuff, and they say, well, we're going to put you on the list, and it might be 18 months, it might be whatever, before we, we demolish the property and so on. Mr. Leverett, I, I have to tell you, you're out of time now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's fine. That's fine. I want to also inform you and uh, Mr. Bremer that we will take the matter under advisement and we will make a decision. And that decision will be reduced to writing and it will be sent to both you and to uh, the city. Okay? Okay. And um, you can also look on our website, but I know you said you're having trouble accessing computers and figuring I it out. But yeah, and I've, I've mentioned that in. Yes. I understand. But don't worry, you will actually receive it in writing, and it will come from the clerk of courts and, and uh, into your address that you have on file. Okay? okay. Well, that one dispute about not getting the, the filings and stuff, that appears to be delivered because there was a Well, you, you can't keep arguing the okay. case to me, okay? I'm sorry. Or to us, I should say. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, court will be